Hello, it's Takuyaki Boys and welcome to another video and um, I haven't been here for a long time, like a couple months actually. Um, and I want to talk about that a little bit as I feel like I just kind of disappeared for no good reason. I feel like I was kind of, you know, getting kind of started pretty okay and then I just disappeared out of thin air. Yeah, and I kind of want to give a good reasoning to that. So. I'm sorry if you're here for like Japan content right now. This is not like the video for you. This is mainly a video to just kind of maybe connect with some of you and kind of ramble and get my story out there, you know, as I'm still trying to figure out what I'm actually doing with life and jobs, passions, hobbies, etc. So yeah, let's start off first with where I've been. Let me just pull up my YouTube channel here. Three months ago is uh, when I last uploaded a video. And if I recall correctly, I was still working at the time, like full time. And I started to notice that work, the work that I did just wasn't good for my mental health. I just fucking hated it. It was probably like the most bare minimum shit job that you could do, you know, like regular ass fucking warehouse work. Um, and, you know, I'm not shitting on the people who do that. If you want to do that work for the rest of your life, good on you. We need you in this uh, capitalist society that we live in. Um, but you know, it's not for me. It's, it's definitely not for me. And I figured that out after like almost two years of working there and I just quit at some point. Um, also because of external factors that were out of my control, I just ended up quitting. It wasn't for me. My mental health was at a very low point and I feel like it kind of still is simmering at a pretty low point. With that, yeah, I made that big decision of just giving up my job and I'm actually jobless still. <laughs> for uh, a couple months now, which I don't know, I'm not really ashamed to admit or anything. Like it's, I, I'm taking this time to kind of figure out who I am, what I'm doing, what I wanna do, you know, what my passions are, what I like doing, etc. I'm in a very lucky position where I can still just, you know, support my own living and just live on my own here in my house. Um, so I'm very lucky and I'm very grateful for that. But um, apart from that, it's not been, too good uh, let's just say that yeah what i've been doing in the meantime is mostly just brain rotting away honestly um i've noticed that you know if you don't actually have a schedule and if you don't actually need to go out every day then you know you end up living towards such a lifestyle right um which kind of sucks because i would love to like change it around and actually do stuff but it's been difficult to say the least um I have been you know, picking up like driver's lessons. I've, been, I've actually gone to therapy. I have actual like uh, coaching from Healthy Gamer, which I don't know if, if you know that, it's a very good platform here on YouTube as well. Like a, a YouTube channel called Healthy Gamer GG run by uh, Dr. K, uh, you might know him. Um, and I've actually uh, bought coaching. So I am also like having weekly coaching sessions with a personal coach. And I would say it's been it's been helping it's definitely been helping, but it's just, it's it's taking off slow. I would like to see more results, except I also need to be okay with the fact that results will come over time and I just need to like chill, you know? So that's where I've been mainly. Um, so talking about this channel and me as a person, I've always had like a big vision, like a big dream for this channel, right? Before I went on a holiday to Japan, it was just this this far goal to go to Japan for a longer time, possibly to like do a language study there and like just vlog my experiences to just like, to just take people along, you know, like take people along a personal journey that they might be able to relate to, right? Because I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there right now that haven't had the luxury to go to Japan, um, but have been really wanting to. Um, I know I have for the longest time before I actually went on a holiday. Before that, I also watched all the creators from Japan. The Abroad in Japan, the Sea Dog VA, the, the Anime Man, um, the uh, Takanashi from Japan, you know, the interviewer, you name it, you know? Like all those kinds of people, I would love to watch them just because I wanted like to look towards a future, like a potential future for me. I am by all means not saying that Japan is a perfect country and that I am a individual that's just like, oh my God, Japan is so perfect, you know, like, no. No, I want to be able to work towards a sustainable future for myself and not have to live in the Japanese workforce, if that makes sense. I want to be able to first do something that I can do 
to sustain my own life wherever I am. So I'm kind of like trying to find this path of financial freedom, if you will. A very good example is someone like uh, Ali Abdal. Uh, he's a personal improvement and financial YouTube channel, like a YouTuber. Basically, he was like a doctor turned YouTuber and entrepreneur. And he's a pretty good inspiration of mine. I wouldn't say he's like my main inspiration, but he's definitely just, he's very trustworthy and he really knows what he's talking about, right? Um, and I respect him a lot for that. And I feel like that's kind of like the point where I want to be, right? It's just like, I want to be able to sustain what I do, no matter where I am in the world. So that wherever I go, I don't have the stress of like, oh shit, I need to like, I need to work and like, I can't just go somewhere and then like give up my income. So yeah, that's a bit, of, that's a bit of a tangent, you know, like that, that's kind of the path that I've been wandering lately. It's like the financial freedom, you know, and I'm sure there's many of you that can relate to that. Um, because it's kind of like this new burst of, of hype almost in like young teenagers to like adolescents to like young adults, right? Like everyone's now realizing that, wow, maybe like a nine to five life isn't fun. All your life you get told by the adults from the, the previous generation that, oh, and you have to work for this and then you have to study and then you have to, you have to work more and then you have to like, you have to achieve big things, right? And... I am, I can confidently say that I am one of those um, in this generation that just doesn't want that. I don't want to live uh, a nine to five life. As harsh as reality sometimes is, sometimes people are just not lucky enough or they're just not willing enough to change. Um, but I have definitely fully convinced myself that I cannot live a nine to five life. And with that, I want to jump into a different topic that I've kind of like learned recently, also because of Dr. K, is apparently I am stuck in what is called a quarter life crisis. It is a term that I actually have never heard of before, which is funny because when I learned about it through Dr. K, he made it seem like, well, at least like 70% of all the young adults now in the US, at least uh, from a research group, right, are going through this quarter life crisis. And I'm like, that's, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot. How come I never heard of this before? I've heard of like a midlife crisis before, but definitely not about like a quarter life crisis, which is kind of funny because it spoke to me very, very personally. I even said like to my friends as well that the quarter life crisis and how he explained you know the the topic was just it, it just felt like a personal assassination attempt on me alone because everything he said about the very first phase that you come in which is called locked in if i um if i recall it is this phase where you you know you start to you're kind of like content with everything you're kind of like working you're just doing everything it's just like okay well everything's like fine now um, but you kind of like know that, okay, like down the line, I want to change stuff. Um, and then you go to like phase two a, which is then I'm not sure what it's called again. I might need, wait, let me, let me just look it up before I like, yeah. So here it is. Um, having lost the identity that defined them during phase one. So, you know, the stable job, but not having yet gained a new identity to replace it. A temporary identity vacuum is experienced. The sense of confusion that comes with this is described as anxiety provoking and disorientating. That was actually phase 2A. This is very confusing. I don't know, you know, just to sit back, you know, this could be a podcast episode, right? Like I'm just chatting, you know, we're just having a, having a little chill chat about life and improvement, right? Then phase 2B, the timeout. During this phase, a person intentionally takes time away to reflect on their transitional situation, to resolve painful emotions and to develop a new foundation for their adult identity, which is where I'm at right now. During the timeout period, whether before or after final separation, a person often travels or moves to a different physical location in order to gain some distance and perspective on the troubles of phase 2A. Okay, I didn't, I actually traveled, you know, that's where I got my perspective of, okay, this is actually where I want to settle at some point in my life. Um, that gave me the actual realization, which I also said in the finale of my journey to Japan, this is where I want to be in my future, whether that's for a year, five years, 10 years, the rest of my life, for a longer, like a prolonged period of time, I want to be there and want to live my life there. And I feel like that's where I'm at right now because I'm looking back on everything and I'm looking forward, but I, I just don't know how to get 
to where I want to be. Motivationally, this period is described by avoidance, the desire to not bind into new commitments or pursue future aspirations. And I feel like that sentence is so powerful because that's exactly what I'm experiencing right now. There are a couple of surface level interests that I like, but I am too afraid to commit to them. As Dr. K said it beautifully, again, it's like swimming out into open sea without any island ahead, without nothing. It's literally just like, you're going in, you're starting to swim, and where the fuck are you gonna end up, you know? You don't know. You don't know if there's gonna be an island. You don't know if there's gonna be a ship, like, waiting for you. And that's what I'm, like, kind of afraid of right now. It's this, it's this uncertainty of, if I'm going to do this, will I fail? Or will I succeed because in my past personally the things that i have tried never really worked out <laughs> and you might like judge me for it because oh wow like if you want to become a professional gamer that's like only like 0.0001 percent of like the population who gets to do that okay sure if you want to become a youtuber or a streamer only like 0.0001 percent like blah 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 i know i know a very small percentage of people get to do what i want to do but one part of my ego brain is also saying, if they did it, why can't I do it? They are also just people. They started off in their little homes, just making shitty videos. Granted, they did it in a period where shitty videos were still acceptable, but they still built up everything. So why can't I do that? And I feel, I think that's more of like an ego thing, I guess. I am a human, like all of them. So I think I deserve something like that as well. And then stage three of the quarter life crisis is called exploration. In this phase, new commitments and goals are proactively tried out and explored. A person now purposely looks for ways of developing a life structure that's more aligned with their own values, aspirations, and inner identity than pre-crisis. So phase three, you're already like kind of exiting the quarter life crisis. And I feel like I am nowhere near that yet. But it's funny because Dr. K actually mentioned that a quarter life crisis is almost essential. Going back to your old life and like giving up on this crisis is actually the wrong thing to do. He actually said that it is almost essential that you go through this entire crisis to like truly find your purpose and truly find out who you are. And that's where I'm kind of like struggling with right now. It's like, okay, so I need to go through this, but then I still need to do something, you know? I have to like come to terms with the fact that, okay, things are gonna be scary. Things are gonna be very, very scary. I'm gonna have to do things that are gonna make me feel uncomfortable, that are gonna just make me feel shit, you know, because my fucking perfectionistic brain is like, see, I bought a keyboard, right? I bought a keyboard, a very entry-level keyboard, but it's just like, you know, what if I wanna try music? I've always like had a, had a small surface level interest towards music and, uh, a keyboard would be like the most easy thing in my opinion. It is almost I can't commit to a hobby because I start this 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 spiral of I want to perform. That's always been a part of my brain. I want to perform even if I'm just starting out a new hobby, which is absolutely ridiculous. I know. I should be happy if I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know, for the first time on this fucking thing. But I'm not. I'm like, okay, what if I can just play like the Interstellar main theme on like fucking two hands? Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I really hope there's some people that can relate to this because it's absolutely, I, I am aware it's ridiculous, but it's still how I am. Uh, and then phase four of the, the quarter life crisis is like rebuilding. So, you know, that involves a renewed engagement with long-term commitments and clear plans. And that's, I'm nowhere near that. So I'm not even gonna fucking look at that. So yeah, the quarter life crisis, I would really recommend people that are kind of struggling in their early twenties, maybe even late twenties uh, with this identity crisis, whether that be school relationship, career, you name it, like to just look this up and especially look at this video from uh, healthy gamer GG called why you feel lost in your twenties because it gave me such an interesting perspective on feeling lost in your 20s. I don't think I've ever had such a big reality slap watching this video. I'm not I'm not saying that oh, magically I now know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. It's a bit more reasonable now if that makes sense that I am having such a hard time with this and I'm not the only one apparently. Um well I mean I knew I'm not the only one but like this specific this super specific you know stuck in life not knowing what to do, not knowing who you are feeling that has just been like crawling away at me for like the longest time and what does that mean for this channel <laughs> okay let, let, may, maybe we can finally go towards this you know like this video is already getting a like a decent decent length so 
what does that mean for this channel? It means that, so my goal with this channel was always like making fun videos, right? Like making fun videos about Japan. Fun, slightly informative, but more so entertaining where people can maybe like, you know, because that is the slogan of my, my channel is taking you along in brackets to Japan. Um, because if you take away the along, it's taking you to Japan because I want to be able to get people to realize that, hey, I am a simple individual. I am a nobody, right? Like I am autistic, I am socially awkward, but I have made a journey that seemed like impossible for me when I thought about it like years ago. And then I did it, you know? So it's like, people can do it. I can do it. And if I can do it, trust me, I know a lot of you can do it as well. Because I'm not like superhuman. I'm not special. I'm just I'm just a regular dude with autism. <laughs> and then if you give back the along, so taking you along to Japan, it's because I also want a channel where I can show off things from Japan. You know, like I want to take you along to Japan, and that's why I feel like that that slogan is so nice because it it kind of incentivizes that I want to help people to go to Japan themselves, but I also want to take them along with me. Um, and that's kind of my, my my whole goal, like my vision with this channel. And now comes the annoying part. If you're not in Japan, you can't really do that. And I don't wanna be stuck to shitty informative videos, you know, of like, what to do before your trip? What to do here? What to do there? Um, how do you do this, right? I just, I wanna make fun videos about Japan, but the annoying realization is that you can't really if you're not in Japan. Like obviously I have researched many, many, many hours of research about content creation and Japan and like niches and all that. Nothing will beat actually going to a tourist destination and making a video about it because I want to be able to show it off. You know, I want to be there. I want to like talk to a camera and be like, hey, look at this. This is really cool. It's really fun. I am starting to realize that it's almost impossible to do. As much as I want to keep this channel mostly Japan related, I'm kind of thinking about throwing in some like personal growth videos or something, you know, M maybe connect more with me on a personal level, make this more of a like an like a journey, you know, like a personal growth journey as well to where I can show people that look, I am a human, I have my issues, I have my quarter life crisis, you know, but I still want to take people along and try to get to where I want to be eventually. I, I've been thinking about like also just making it more of a, a like a personal journey channel, which is also coincidentally pretty difficult because I still wouldn't really know what to talk about. Like this is just one video where I can ramble about everything, but it's still, it's still hard because after this video, I will have like, nothing left you know um i've been trying to script some videos but yeah you know like my energy levels and inspiration have just been on such a low little fire that i can't really get myself to do that and the most tedious part about video making which is editing is also something i absolutely fucking hate and it also takes up the most time editing videos is just a fucking annoying process i'm not gonna lie like i love almost every aspect from video making I even love thumbnail design. Like I, I love fiddling around in Photoshop to make a cool thumbnail and I'll never be satisfied with a thumbnail either. But the video editing is just such a fucking annoying process. I don't know, man. Like I, I kind of want to like maybe integrate some more personal growth videos, just, just like casual chats, you know, to keep the channel alive because I don't want to let this die, let this little flame that I've created here die out all of a sudden. Because I feel like I've created a very nice base. And not to like stroke my own ego, but I feel like I am pretty knowledgeable on how to market YouTube videos. I think personally. I need to do more with it and that's like the most difficult part right now. Concluding everything, you know, like I'm still alive, don't worry. I am still doing okay. I have been trying for months to like get myself to make new videos. It's just been really difficult. Yeah, I kind of want to keep the vision of this channel alive still. I still feel like this is the ultimate hobby slash job career that you could want is like a content creator, freelance. And I want other people to see the wonders of Japan. I want to inspire others to be like, yo man, I am nothing special, but I went on a solo trip to Japan and 
had a fucking whale of a time. This video is just a little ramble for me personally. You can keep it on in the background if you'd like. Sorry, there hasn't been a lot of videos recently. I am currently stuck in a like content creator block rut. Also because I need to get my life back on the rails, you know, that would be nice. And I'm trying to figure out hard what I can do to, you know, mo motivate that to actually happen. I've been getting more into voice acting. I'm, I, I'm actually actively trying to get voice acting to kind of s get started. It's, it's another really hard profession to be able to get good at. And I can like watch many videos on how to do it, how to like, how to use your voice, how to stretch, how to uh, do emotions, you know? But at the end of the day, you still need to fucking do it, which is also like uh, a hard, <clears throat> A hard thing to do you know maybe i'll throw in some voice acting as well because at the end of the day this is my channel so i get to do what the fuck i want M maybe we'll do some like more personal journey stuff on this like whether that be mental health whether that's life whether that's career you know i kind of want to make this more of a personal journey channel probably i, I don't want to ramble on too long i feel like i've said like the main points that i wanted to say i'm still here it's just a bit difficult sometimes i still really want to go to japan i'm trying to figure out how to get there and I don't want to let this channel die. This is the best you're going to get for now. Anyway, I hope you still kind of enjoyed me rambling about all this shit. Thank you for watching. If you made it all the way through, like, goddamn, you're a fucking, you're a champ. Like, honestly, you're, you're like, uh, you're like, uh, the hat's off to you. If I had a hat, I don't, I have a hat over there somewhere. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much. If you made it all the way here, I can't promise whether I'll upload uh, anytime soon. I'm sorry for that. I hope you could use some of my weird ass knowledge. And yeah, maybe I'll see you again here soon. Uh, sayonara.